Welcome back. This is Gabi from Blue Bonnet Crafters and in this video I'm going to show you how you can do the bias weave on a Schacht Zoom Loom. A few words ahead. Um, so this can be the Schacht Zoom Loom, it can be the traditional Weave It Loom or any other loom that's available on the market these days that has the uh, the 4x4 four four size and the uh, classical weave it um, pin distribution where the pins are in groups of three with a little space in between. So I'm going to show you this on the zoom loom but, uh, and the other thing is um, there's really no one true method for weaving the bias on the zoom loom. There are multiple ways to do it uh, multiple tools that you can use and so whatever you fancy go ahead and use it. I will show you in this video what works for me and hopefully that gets that's enough to get you guys going. All right let's take a look. So this is the sample. Um, it is kind of like a square but it's on on set on the tip and it has an interesting stretch in the opposite direction of a traditional uh, square and that's what we're going to weave. We will be using the continuous strand weaving method. Um, at minimum we will need a crochet hook. I have chosen uh, an afghan hook three and a half millimeters but you can use uh, you know a thin locker hook. Uh, one thing that you need to do is make sure that it still fits in the spaces, in the open spaces here, because we will re need that for when we do the actual weaving. All right, um, let's get started. I'm using Karen Simply Soft because that's uh, just really good for demonstration purposes. Let me zoom in a little bit more. All right, so this is the Schacht Zoom Loom one, two, and three and four corners. And we will turn the zoom loom. And I want you to turn it so that you have the number three facing towards you. Number three is facing towards you. And the number two is facing away from you. And that's how we will get started. Um, I'm just drawing a quick picture. So this is corner number two and you will see the corner looks like this. I have to zoom a little bit out so that you can actually see it. The corner pins, so there's a group of three that are close together and then here we have one, two, three, and one, two, three starting here. And at the bottom, we have corner number three. And there we have the corner looks like there are two and nothing and two and nothing. And then here, one, two, three, and one, two, three. Make sure that you can see this. Yeah, okay. So that's how we want to start. And I'll leave those um, cards out for now so that you can see when I get started. Um, I get started with measuring two times the side length, which uh, is enough to sew the squares together in the end. So once, twice, and then I make a slip knot. And not a little one, I actually make a big one like this, a real, real, real big loop, because I'm going to put that over the corner on number two, just the one pin on number two, and then over the two pins here at the bottom at corner number three. So just over one pin at two, and the two pins at corner number three. Okay, all right, 
and then you get started use your use your working yarn and go around the top group put the yarn into the middle of the loom and then start weaving with the crochet hook you can go between all of the spaces and it really doesn't matter which space you use you see uh, but that's so that you can get to the weaving start weaving under over fetch the thread and see with my left hand how i wind it around the needle to the top that holds it in place and then i go over the pin on the right of the top group okay then i pull it in here and guide with my needle the yarn to the bottom of the loom and go to the next available pin on the right side which is this one here and you see the yarn is already here on the left side the working yarn will always stay here on the left side so I guide it around the next available pin here at the bottom left go around it and then go back to the top to the next available pin on the left side and go around that one and I'm back in position so what happened here is we wove one round we started here at the top guided the yarn around the first pin on the left did the weaving guided the yarn around the first pin on the right then guided the yarn all the way down to the loom to the opposite corner around the first pin at the bottom right and then the yarn was already on the other side so we just needed to guide it here around the first available pin on the bottom left and then guided it back to the top so one round is worked and we're back into position let's do it again go between any of the groups under over under over fetch the yarn flip it over to keep it in place pull it through next available on the top right fetch the yarn when i have little customers that i show it i say go fish guide it to the next available pin at the bottom right and you already see here the work yarn is always on the left i just need to guide it around the next pin at the bottom left guide it to the next pin and around the top left and our next row is woven okay here's another thing that i want to point out keep it loosely keep the yarn loosely don't weave too tight okay from the very early beginning when you can do a motion like this you are good because there's a lot of weaving that we will be doing and it will get tighter and tighter so if you don't start loosely it will become really very painful to weave all right one more time we go anywhere between the groups with our needle under over under over under over fetch the yarn and i flip it to the top to keep it in place next available pin at the top right go fish and guide it down to the next available pin at the bottom right the yarn is already on the left side so we just need to guide it around the next available pin at the bot bottom left and back to the top to the next available pin on the top left to prepare for the next row all right under 
over, under, over, under, over, un under, over. Fetch the y working yarn, pull it through. Next available pin, top right. Go fish, guide it down to the next available pin, bottom right. The yarn is already on the other side, so we just need to slide it over around the next hook and back to the top around the next pin. Under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under, over, and you see the rows are getting longer. Next top right. Next bottom right. And you can see here, we only weave here at the top, but when we guide the yarn down, you can see that the weaving copies to the bottom. And that's the beauty of continuous strand weaving. You do weaving once and it weaves at the top and at the bottom at the same time. All right, now is the time to start packing. Packing is very important with this weaving method. So I'm using uh, the, the back of my crochet hook and just push it in. You can use kitchen fork or any uh, packing tool of your liking. There are lots of really cool tools available, but again, a simple kitchen fork or even a plastic fork will uh, do just fine. I want to weave a few more rows here, um, under, over, under, over, all the way across, because I want to show you something. If you are new to this method, um, next available pin. Actually, there are two things that I want to show you. Next available pin, carry over and go back to start the next row and pack. Um, one thing, one reason, you know, this is like, some people probably ask this like, okay, why is she using the second corner and the third corner? Why is she not using any corner of the zoom bill? It shouldn't matter. Well, it does matter uh, because all the corners have different pin settings on the zoom room and um, I have, I'm using uh, this direction for two reasons. Number one, you can see that on both sides, the groups by three are the same. Like here is a group of three, here's a group of three, here's a group of three, and here's a group of three, all the way, almost all the way uh, to the white sides. The same here, group of three, group of three, and they are in parallel, we copy on the other side, group of three, group of three. This is helpful in case you get lost if you are on the right pin or the right side. For example, and I can show you this. So here is the second group of three pins and I'm starting the row at the last pin of the second group. All right, so I go in here anywhere. And under, over, under, over, under, over, all the way across. Fetch the yarn. Okay, let's do this again. That. Sometimes the, the, the Karen Simply Soft splits a little bit and you can either fix it or just redo the row. Uh, since I want to demonstrate, I redo the row. So here is here we go. And so here we started the round at the last pin of the second group. We go to the last pin of the second group. We guide it down. And that brings us to the last pin of the second group. And we go around the last pin 
of the second group. And you go to the next beginning of the row. Did you see that? So basically, if you get lost or if you just want to make sure that you weave straight and get it all, so you can, you know, you can always weave the same pin. Last, 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 last. And we can do one more. Now I'm on the first pin of the third group. Under, over. All the way across. Fetch the yarn. First pin of the third group. First pin of the third group. First pin of the third group. And going back to the top left where I start my new um, where I start my new round. So that's the reason why that's one reason why I work uh, the two three direction. The other one is as the rows get longer, the weaving gets more complicated. And here is in, in the in the center, but we'll see that later, but I'm mentioning this now, it's where we have the longest row to weave. And there you have on both sides an opening for your crochet hook. So you can actually, you will see this, you can actually weave between uh, the opening all the way across, fetch the yarn here and pull it back with no problem. All right, but we leave that for later. Uh, another thing that I want to show you here is, um, and if you have seen my, my um, hexagon pin loom videos, um, I'll always point out that you weave with an arch. You see how this yarn arches here? And that is very important and perfectly proper because that will give you the right tension. If this is straight, you will not be able to finish the square because it just gets too tight. So always make sure that you have the little arch before you pack your weaving and then that will give it the right tension to actually finish the square. All right, so I will pause here and we'll, um, we'll do a little bit weaving and I like you do your weaving. Um, I would want you to stop once you get to the last group here before you get to the corner. Remember to weave loosely and then I'll see you in a little bit uh, when we get to the last corner, uh, to the last group on the corners. All right, uh, fast forward, here we are. Um, I have woven up to the last groups on the sides and I worked one row around the first pin of the last groups. And um, I left it like this so that I can show you here the arches, the arches are now touching. Um, don't be tempted to pull in the yarn, but just slide those yarns threads apart and put them into place. And you probably, if you have been weaving along, you probably notice that the rows are really getting very long here and uh, that it's getting rather tight. So the space that we have to work just pack it okay you can always fix you know uh, slide it back later but you want to keep the workspace open as much as possible that's one thing the other thing is actually the good news because um we only have one more row to weave uh and let's do that right now again um uh, the reason why I wanted to fast forward here so that I can chat about a lot of other things. Um, we could do this with the, with the crochet hook, but I also want to show you that you can use um, the um, loop turner. 
Again, the loop turner is a, a thing from uh, sewing when you weave pipes and it has a little hook and when you slide it back, the hook closes. I hope you can see that like this. And that's what you need here. The, the advantage is that this hook closes. The disadvantage is that those loop turners are quite flexible. So they are not really very strong and not really very comfortable to weave a lot with. But I want to show you this one row. Oh yeah, just for the record, you could also use the locker hook. But the locker hook is getting a little bit short here. You can see it here. It's still honestly my favorite tool. If I do, do weave the bias, that's what I'm using uh, because it's strong enough and it has the uh, very special, uh, a little bit more uh, pronounced hook, which keeps the yarn e more easily. You can see that here, um, but it is a little bit short. To my knowledge, there are no longer uh, locker hooks available in the market that are that thin. <clears throat> there are thicker ones, but the thicker ones have the problem that they don't fit into the spaces anymore. So it's uh, your Afghan crochet hook, three and a half, or the little bit shorter locker hook. And I will show you the loop turner here. Uh, so we do the under over all the way across and this takes a little bit longer because a i don't i want to demonstrate it and i don't want to just uh, probably if you would work with it you would hold it in your hands actually i can hold it in my hands so that's one thing the other thing is that it's a little bit flexible um the loop turners you can get them like at any um a place where you where you get sewing supplies this is like one of the you know uh, join fabrics or um, Hobby Lobby you can get them online uh, Driz makes them um, look out they come in you know some some are a little bit more flimsy than others um, so the sturdier you can get the better so you can see I'm here oh I forgot to zoom my start of the round like here and I go over the last one and go through a little bit okay um, and then I need to make sure that I get between the hook and the flap let me just hold this hold this up a little bit so that you can see so make sure the yarn is between the hook and the flap so that you when start to pull it back it closes in I hope that you can see that on the video and then it's really totally easy so there's no snatching and you can just very easily just pull it through very easily right here Ah, this is beautiful um, another thing that I want to show you here that you can do with the last rows pull it through you don't have to wiggle around to make uh, to, to get it around uh, the pins right there pull the whole whole yarn a little bit through and then release it and then put the yarn over the pins with your with your fingers okay like this and this and then you can always adjust gently adjust the tension remember you want to have it so that there is enough um, that it's still loose enough even on on the last rows um, you know for people who have been using the bias weave um, there are several things not working loosely enough is a big is probably the biggest issue so always make sure you have those arches and just pack them into both sides. Um, the next thing is that particularly with the last rows, you have a tendency to pull the yarn through. Uh, simply don't do it because it, it, it would build a bar. You would see like it looks like a bar in the fabric where it's tighter and you just want to do that. 
so weave loosely the last thing is that people have it you know um i have read a lot of um comments where it says oh yeah it's easy with the um with weaving the bias you know just start at the corners and then just weave every pin until you run out of pins it's true and it's not true um we will actually stop weaving here and i will show you here where we stop so where's my pen so this is corner number one and after we wove this last round there are still two pins without yarn so i'll just leave it like this so so these are the two pins without yarn and on this side which is corner number four there are actually a whole bunch of pins that don't so there is like one two three and the first pin of that group without yarn And that is okay. Um, the reason, uh, okay, if you are allergic to mathematics, uh, I would like you to mute this video for about 10 seconds, and then I can prove to the rest of the world uh, why it is okay to not weave every single pin. Are you ready? Okay, please go ahead and mute. Um, the reason why you don't have to weave every single pin is um, it's a purely mathematical reason. Um, on the zoom loom, you have 31 threads on four inches in each direction. Uh, so there's like 31 horizontally and 31 vertically. If you want to achieve the same fabric density for the bias weave, you have to have you need to approximately get 44 rows here on this long side and that would be the long side is like this end here on our um, in our weaving so and to get to 44 threads in our bias weave we can stop exactly here all right i hope this was 10 seconds and the rest of the world is joining us back so all we need to do is just lock in our weaving here and how we do this is uh, measure around all pins with one wrap okay and this actually works for any size bias weave on a square uh, one wrap is enough to weave the last row and have a little tail for sewing. Okay, and that's what we're going to do. And um, so for this, uh, this last row is just not a round, but you will weave really one row. And you can do that with any tool you want. I'm actually, for demonstration purposes, going to show you this with the needle that comes with the zoom loom it's a six inch needle which is a little bit short it just barely makes it across uh, the diagonal but it's still working you can also again uh, use the afghan hook and just pull the yarn through or the loop turner and pull the yarn through but again for demonstration purposes and show you different tools um, I'm using the needle that comes with the zoom loom and all you need to do is um, you know just go around any pin here on on this side and then weave across under over 
and all the way across. Um, again, <clears throat> this will get, and you will see it shortly, that it will, this, this is a, a rather short needle, but you can support it with your, with your other hand here at the bottom. So just weave it under and over and give it support with the other hand. Oh, actually, I just realized I need to show you with my right hand because you are right-handed. So turn the loom, go around any pins here on this side, and then start weaving. Under, over, under, over, all the way across. And I'm going a little bit slowly, A, to show you, B, to not split the yarn, because at this point, this is kind of the, the maximum. You have the real fabric tension, the final fabric tension, and you don't want to split the yarn. And now I can show you here, I'm actually pushing the yarn gently with my other hand while I weave under over. And that helps it quite a bit. So even with a shorter needle, you will be perfectly fine. Let me just have a few more rows right here. Three, two, one. Okay. And then you push the needle through and there's just enough that you can actually pull it and see, this is the last row that locks it all in. Again, do not pull too tight because you want it to become part of the fabric, all right? And here is your completed diagonally woven square. Uh, use your packing comb and just stroke your weaving like this until it looks all even or about even. How does this look? You like it? All right, ready, set, go. All you need to do is push it off. And here is your bias woven square. All right, congratulations. Weave one, weave many, and uh, we'll show you a few things that you can actually do with them in a little while.